Wow, just under five months' time, the 2022 World Cup gets underway in Qatar today. I'm going to be giving you my early group stage predictions, all eight groups, all 32 countries. I'm absolutely buzzing for this tournament. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to start with Group A, the hosts, Qatar. Let's be honest, none of us have heard of a single one of their players they're destined to come forth unless they put some sort of spin on this tournament and inflict some corruption into it. They're coming forth, although they might have a chance against Ecuador, who I've put in third place. Their main player only really is the former West Ham striker, the absolute flop, Ener Valencia. And Brighton's young lad, he's had a decent season, Moises Caicedo. They are the only really players of note for Ecuador. The game between Ecuador and Qatar will decide who comes third and fourth. I'm backing Ecuador to get third, Qatar fourth, and then the current holders of the African Cup of Nations, Senegal, Edouard Mendy in goal, Koulibaly in defence, Idrissa Garnagay in central midfield, and of course up top, their captain, leader, legend, about to sign for Bayern Munich, Mr Sadio Mane. They've got a decent core to the squad at Senegal. I reckon they'll come second behind Louis van Gaal's Netherlands team of course star studded squad these orange boys have the pie and Cody Gakbo watch out for him up top Van Dyke at the back it's just Virgil Van Dyke in it and in the middle Van der Beek Frankie de Jong Holland could be a danger to the World Cup this year and it's group B now and to be completely honest I could sit here and talk to you for hours about the reasons Gareth Southgate's three lines must and really, really should be finishing the top of this Group B. I mean, I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious. Iran, USA and Wales are their competition. If we don't top this group, serious questions have to be asked for that man in the waistcoat. Like I said, Iran, one of the three teams competing with England in this group. They've actually got some decent players up top. Apart from that, not so much. Mehdi Taremi of Porto, remember his incredible goal against Chelsea in the Champions League. Sadar Azmoun from Zenit. And you'll know Ali Reza Jahanbach, another lover of bicycle kicks, formerly of Brighton. Now at final, Iran could possibly cause a surprise. I reckon they'll beat USA to third place, you know. America got Christian Pulisic and Giovanni Reina. I just don't see them as a squad, as a whole, really doing much whatsoever to challenge Iran to third. Iran for third, USA for fourth, and Wales to come in second under Rob Page. He's rejuvenated that nation as a footballing country. Gareth Bale, of course, spearheaded the Red Dragon of Wales to Qatar. I'm backing them to come second and progress to the next round. Welsh lot, you'll love that. Group C contains two of the world's best players at the moment, without a shadow of a doubt. We'll talk a bit more about Raul Jimenez and Matty Cash a little bit later on. First team, Argentina, very, very recently lifted the finalissima at Wembley. I can see them going very, very far in this competition, of course. They've got Messi, they've got Lataro Martinez, they've got Angel Di Maria, they've got Paolo Dybala. The list goes on. If they keep those key players fit, they are sure to absolutely steamroll this group. Now, Saudi Arabia, who are under the experienced management of Hervé Renard. 2014, he was manager of Ivory Coast in the Brazil World Cup. In Russia 2018, he managed Morocco, but Saudi Arabia, I don't see them coming anywhere else in this group other than fourth. Their squad is simply too weak. Under the other two teams in this group, Mexico and Poland, the Mexicans on one hand have the likes of Raul Jimenez, Herving Lozano. Do you remember their star goalkeeper from Brazil 2014, Guillermo Ochoa? If you don't remember him, give your head a good damn spin. What a man he is with that headband. Poland now. Matty Cash from Aston Villa is their new right back. Of course, up top, their legend. The goal machine, Robert Lewandowski. If they were to advance from the group, it would be because of his goals. But unfortunately, Polish fans, I do not see it. For me, Mexico to come second, Poland in third and out of the World Cup. And the holders, France, they won it in Moscow in 2018. Can they do the same in Doha in a couple of months' time? I reckon they can. It's just a case of whether they will or not. 
I'm saying they're going to top Group D, but they do face some tough competition. The first of the three teams they will face is Australia, who made it through against Peru on penalties by the skin of their teeth. Their goalkeeper's heroics sent them through in the end. But I'm sorry, Aussies fans, I just don't see you getting out of this group purely because of Denmark. What a strong Euro 2020 tournament they had. Knocked out by England in the semis. Of course, they don't have the most well-beating of squads. Do not get me wrong. But the togetherness and the unity and the chemistry between this Denmark team is something very, very special and very admirable for other countries. In this competition, Denmark in second, leaving Tunisia, the final team in Group D. I'm saying they're going to come fourth. They've got Wabi Kazri, the ex Sunderland man now at St Etienne, and Hani Bal Majiri from Man United. United fans will know all about him, but Tunisia just too weak to advance to the last 16 for me. Some are calling this the group of death. Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, Japan. It is pretty hard to call. We're going to start with Luis Enrique's España. They've got an absolutely top-class squad from top to bottom, from defence to attack. Their squad is top, top tier. Let me tell you that for one. I'm backing them to come second. Behind who? You'll find out in just a moment. Then we're going to go to Costa Rica. Do you remember the upset they caused to England at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil? They topped the group against all the odds. They've got Kayla Navas in goal. That is Double decent. Joel Campbell, remember him, Arsenal fans. Brian Ruiz, remember him, Fulham fans. These players will lead Costa Rica to a finish in this World Cup of fourth in Group E. They're not going to do anything. Let's be honest here. Germany, for me, will top the group under Joachim Lowe. Look at their squad and then disagree. It's as simple as that. Then we're going to go to Japan. They've got the likes of Takumi Minamino. Ex Real Madrid, Real Mallorca as well. Wonder kid Takafusa Kubo. Watch out for him. And of course, from Arsenal, Takahiro Tomiyasu. Japan have some decent players. They nearly caused an upset in Russia against Belgium in the last 16. However, I don't see them doing the same to Germany and Spain. Sorry, Japanese boys. But maybe, just maybe, Japan. Frankfurt star striker last year, Daichi Kamada, will score a goal or two and shock everyone and put you through instead of Spain. And that same manager that led Japan to that last 16 clash against Belgium, Vahid Halil Hodzic, features in this group. So do Belgium. This is another group that could be very, very tough to predict. Belgium, Canada, Morocco and Croatia. Which way will it go? We're going to start with Roberto Martinez's Belgium. Of course, they have a squad full of absolute world beaters. We're not even going to go into it because you know the obvious names. I'm just kidding. Kevin De Bruyne. That is all I really have to say. For me, Belgium will top this group. But I wouldn't be surprised if they flopped in the early knockout stage. They've got a slightly ageing team and a manager who's way past his prime, in my opinion, in Roberto Martinez. I'm just saying that could be something to watch out for. Now Canada, of course, at right back, they have got Mr. Alfonso Davis. Will he take them to the last 16? No. Next up, Morocco under Vahid Halil Hodzic. They have actually some decent, decent players in that squad. Romain Saiz just gone from Wolves to Besiktas. Afraf Hakimi, of course, we all know him about him. And Chelsea's Hakim Ziyech. Could they be the players to potentially cause an upset to Croatia and send the Moroccans to the knockout stages? I'm not so sure. I just think Croatia will prove a bit too strong for Morocco. That game will decide second place for me. And the Croatian stars on that team will knock out the Moroccans and send the red and white checkers or whatever you call it in to the next round Belgium and Croatia for me to advance but I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of them flopped early knockouts now we head into group G where we could well be talking about the winners of this tournament Brazil their squad is simply unreal 
Neymar, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo Moraes, Gabriel Jesus, Richarlison, Rafinha, Dani Alves, Coutinho, Thiago Silva, Alisson from Liverpool in goal. The list goes on. Let's assess the situation now. Let's start with Serbia. Dusan Vlahovic of Juventus. Luka Jovic of Real Madrid, Alexander Mitrovic, the absolute goal machine, Filip Kostic, another one of Frankfurt star players, Sergei Milinkovic Savic, a very, very wanted man across Europe in the transfer window right now, currently at Lazio as I'm recording this. Serbia have a bloody good team and for that reason, I think they are advancing to the last 16 alongside Brazil, ahead of Switzerland and Cameroon. They are coming second. Switzerland and Cameroon, for me, just do not have the same star quality as the Serbs. Of course, for the Swiss, Jordan Jakiri and Granit Xhaka, once they put on a Switzerland shirt, they really do step up to the plate. Cameroon recently hosted AFCON. Vincent Abubakar up top. Does score a lot of goals for them, but I just don't think they'll do anything of note at this year's tournament. Switzerland in third, Cameroon in fourth, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay and South Korea. Some absolutely top world-class footballers across this group. We'll start with Portugal, who are my first place for the eighth and final group. Of course, we don't even need to go into the stars that they've got. They've got Ronaldo, they've got João Felix, we've got Bruno Fernandes. We're going to stop there. Portugal simply have one of the best squads in this tournament. It's as simple as that. They are one of my contenders to lift that trophy in Doha in December. Watch out for them. Ghana, they have a real task at their hand to beat a very, very strong Uruguay side and secure second place. Of course, Thomas Partey in the middle, the RU brothers up top. However, I just don't see Ghana progressing through this group, sadly. Sorry, Ghanaians, you will be very, very keen to beat Uruguay and get revenge for the 2010 saga in South Africa. Luis Suarez is the man that will lead the line for Uruguay alongside the likes of Federico Valverde. Had just had a brilliant season under Ancelotti for Real Madrid. Darwin Nunes just signed for Liverpool. Uruguay have an absolutely brilliant team. They're going to come in second. Ghana will just miss out in third. Sorry, Ghanaians. Fourth place, South Korea. I'm... Um, there's only one player there. It's Son Heung Min, of course, one of the best players in the world, but he cannot single handedly carry this very, very weak South Korea team through to the last 16. Sorry, Koreans, I know a lot of you watch the video, so big up to you. But Portugal to win the group, Uruguay to follow. There we go. We are done and dusted. Groups A to H. How do your group stage predictions compare to mine? Who is your country? And what is your prediction for your own personal country? Let me know down in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to hear from you lot. And I cannot wait to bring you my endless supply of World Cup in Qatar content. I don't think I'll be in Qatar, but... Don't you worry, there'll still be lots and lots of content coming your way. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your predictions and I'll see you in the next video, which will be coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Have a great day, lads. Goodbye.